Good afternoon, Ames Chamber of Commerce members. This is Drew Camp, Director of Public Policy for the Ames Chamber of Commerce for what should likely be our last legislative update of the legislative session. It is sounding like they are going to get done here this weekend, which is a full week earlier than what they thought they were going to get done, but they're just ironing out a few issues and they very well should get done probably today, if not today, most definitely this weekend. That is definitely something we'll keep an eye on, but this will likely be our last legislative update of the session. So getting right into it, just a few issues that I want to touch on that we've seen a lot of action on actually passing and heading to the governor's office, or excuse me, desk, uh, in the last week is property tax reform. That passed and is headed to the governor's desk. Uh, the Economic Development Appropriations Bill, part of which is Future Ready Iowa and Empower Rural Iowa, those both passed, headed to the uh, governor's desk. Both Future Ready Iowa and Empower Rural Iowa received money from the Economic Development Appropriations Money uh, appropriations bill. Future Ready Iowa also received assistance from the Education Appropriations Bill as well. Also important to Ames, the Bioscience Rebrand for the Innovation Center, that also passed and is headed to the governor's desk. The investor tax credit kind of re-adapting the language to make sure that funds are kind of getting pulled from some of those innovation funds that weren't being used as much to put towards the, the angel investor tax credits that are being used a lot uh, for groups like AMC Capital. Um, that bill was paired with a bill that will help facilitate additional economic development in rural parts of the state. That was something House Appropriations Chair Pat Grassley really wanted to push so that we were able to get the language drafted to put uh, that paired with the Angel Investor Tax Credit Bill uh, to really make sure that we're getting that startup funding with angel investors, but then also the rural development assistance is also being paired in there. Uh, we were for that initiative as well, so that passed and is headed to the governor's desk. Also an issue we've talked about for several years now, the Save School Infrastructure uh, Sales Tax Penny, that passed, is headed to the governor's desk. Um, and then the two things that are holding up actually session essentially right now are the two biggest budget bills. Um, that includes health and human services, that's so large because think of things like Medicaid and mental health all come out of there, but then also standings, which essentially becomes the Christmas tree bill. Um, that's something that also has to get figured out as well before they can end session. But as I said, they should be done sometimes this, sometime this week. Just to go back and provide some specificity on some of these issues, with property tax, we actually were able to get a lot of things into the bill to change the language fundamentally of what that was going to do to local governments at the city and county level. Some of the big things we really wanna make sure we note is the hard cap was replaced. That was something communities and counties were very, very much against. We were able to get the hard cap pulled out and have a soft cap put in. Um, the soft cap can be manipulated and go over 2% with a su two thirds super majority of the elected body, so the council or the board of supervisors. And we got the reverse referendum pulled out. Reverse referendums are never good ways to do policy. We were able to get that pulled out. And that was something that was really important as well. While local communities and uh, cities and counties still are not over overly pleased with this uh, grab of their local control, it is important to note that we were able to positively impact the bill so it was not as bad as originally proposed. Another piece that was really important uh, along that entire negotiation as well is that tax increment financing was not included at all in those discussions. So that's something that's really a positive uh, for economic development organizations and counties and cities because they still have the flexibility with that economic development tool. With economic development, uh, development approaches, there were some things we didn't like to necessarily see. There was some one-time funding that got pulled out of the high quality jobs appropriations within economic development appropriations. Uh, to fund two of our priority issues, which were Empower Rural Iowa and Future Ready Iowa. So while we're against kind of taking a haircut on the high quality jobs funding, we obviously were for um, the funding of Empower Rural Iowa and Future Ready Iowa, but the big issue was making sure that we made it very clear to the legislature and appropriators that this needs to be a one-time thing, not an ongoing piece, uh, uh, an ongoing appropriations option uh, for Empower Rural Iowa and Future Ready Iowa. Those need to stand on themselves moving forward. Bioscience rebrand, that really is an important piece uh, with us being the northern hub of the, the cultivation corridor and obviously home of Iowa State University. We always wanna make sure that bioscience and innovation are at the forefront. That bill helps that make that a possibility. The investor tax credits, I really already touched on that, how we empower the angel investor tax credits in those startup funds. 
Uh, and then also we empower rural communities with some uh, changes as Packer asked they wanted with rural economic development. We were able to help facilitate both of those as part of the Chamber Alliance of Professional Developers of Iowa. So we were happy about that. SAVE, uh, that's a really big thing to our school districts. Um, that's the sale tax, one cent sales tax penny that goes to school infrastructure. There was a rather large change made to it in the Senate. Uh, they went from a much larger proportion that used to go directly to schools, I believe it was over 90%, whereas now 70% will go to school infrastructure and 30% will go to property tax relief. That then allowed it to pass the Senate after they had that 30% property tax relief piece put in. It passed the Senate, passed the House. Now it's headed to the governor's desk. That's something we had pushed for for years. So we were happy to see that get over the top. Uh, health and human service and standings. There's still discussions currently going on at the Capitol right now as to what is gonna get put into those bills. There are at times political footballs because that's where a lot of times these issues such as Medicaid, mental health, Planned Parenthood, and those kind of issues get thrown into the health and human services bill. So those can get a little bit messy. So they're trying to talk a little bit through what those are gonna look like. And then standings, as I said, that's kind of the Christmas tree bill. So you really can try to get some of your priorities put on it. So we'll really see what they are able to iron out as far as the House and the Senate uh, as to what the standings bills looks like. Uh, there's still a few small policy bills that have to get pushed through that are still on the calendar. But as I mentioned before, there's no reason to believe they will not be done come Monday morning. Uh, they really should finish up today or sometime this weekend. So we will follow up with some pieces on some of a, just kind of a cumulative overview of what happened this session. Uh, most likely we will come back next week with a legislative update such as this, but I did want to make sure that we did give you an overview of what was occurring prior to them adjourning signy die. So we will do a signy die version of the legislative update next week. It just may not be on Friday, being that the session very well may end um, sometime this weekend. One thing I do want to note before I let you go is please do get out and enjoy Art Walk uh, this afternoon, or excuse me, Music Walk is occurring on Main Street today. So please make sure you make time from 5 to 8 p.m. Get out. There's going to be some really good musicians at some of our Ames Main Street businesses. Please get out and support them and do everything you can to be in downtown Ames and enjoy this nice weather before it cools off for the weekend. So please do come back and enjoy our signing die version next week. I hope you have a nice weekend and I do hope to see you on Main Street for Music Walk tonight. Thank you.